Story 1 This happened to me when I was 10 years old, in Calgary, Alberta, in 1970. I was walking home from school, cutting across the school sports field. Our house wasn't far, we lived across the street from the school. There wasn't any other kids around since I had stayed late for a volleyball practice and the rest of the students had gone home 45 minutes earlier when school let out for the day. It is about 4.30 in the afternoon. Something caught my attention from the corner of my eye, and I stopped and turned to the right to look at it. Floating directly above a house-facing schoolyard was a large UFO. I was in the middle of the football field, so this is about 60 or 70 yards distant from where I stood. The UFO is big and almost touching the roof of the house. It is completely centered on the house, but it is so big, it also is above the house on the left and right. The lots there are 50 feet wide, which puts the UFO at about 150 feet across and perhaps 25, 30 feet tall. It is very bright, giving off a harsh white light which is difficult to look at since it hurts my eyes. I look away back towards my house and see a car and a motorcycle on the side street which intersects the street with the UFO. That street is about half a block away, and I remember being surprised and confused that the drivers are not reacting to the UFO which clearly must be visible to them, and so obvious since it is so bright, but the traffic continues as normal. At that point, I become aware that something is forcing me to turn my head back toward the UFO. I'm turning, and my field of view is changing, but I'm not the one doing it. I struggle to turn away, but I simply can't control any of my body. I remember a feeling of panic, then the next thing that I can remember, I'm walking into my house. It is about 9.30 at night and dark outside. I can't recall anything of the last five hours. My parents were furious with me for being so late. Apparently my parents and my two brothers had been trying to find me for hours. A voice thought in my head tells me to tell them that I'm not feeling well and I need to go to bed. I have no idea where that voice thought came from, but I do exactly as it suggests and run upstairs to my room and go to bed. The next day, I still can't seem to explain what happened and my mother is even more angry with me since my new school shoes are ruined, since the tops of them are all scuffed and dirty, like I was dragged face down across the ground with my feet still dragging on the ground. I told my older brothers what happened, and they suggested I keep quiet about it since nobody would believe me. Good advice, as it turns out, since in the many years since most of the people I have shared the story with don't really know what to say afterward. Many years later, I was looking at my old school workbooks from that time, and they are full of drawings of UFOs, all of the same design, and with more detail than I can recall from memory. For example, in my memory, I can't remember seeing any windows in the UFO since the light was too bright to make out details, but in my drawings, there were large round windows all around the UFO, some with faces looking out. Story 2, I was camping in a campground in North Guyane with some friends. It was starting to downpour, so everyone left their tents in the woods and decided to rent one of the on-site cabins for everyone to sleep in. I decided I'd just sleep in my car because they wanted to stay up late. And I was tired from kayaking all day. I woke up to the rain stopping and it was kind of cold in the car. And I had forgotten my sleeping bag in my tent. I checked the cabin to see if there was any room left and the light was on and everyone was fast asleep. 3 a.m. I didn't want to squeeze in so I decided to trek my way to my tent in the dark with a small pen light. In order to get to my tent, I had to pass by everyone's that they left. Mine was the last one, and even then was 50 f at least from the previous tent before it. I got in my tent, covered up with my sleeping bag, and prepared to catch the last few hours of sleep before sunrise. No more than 10-15 men from me getting in my tent, I began to hear light whispers right outside the tent door. They weren't in English and to my recollection indecipherable, not any language I'd heard at all. Just as the voices started, two orbs appeared together outside the tent. They weren't the same glare as a flashlight would make and both were of two different colors that to the best of my ability had no real distinct color. Just colorful. The whispers outside the tent began arguing louder between each other, but still in a hushed tone. And as the whispers grew louder, the lights began swirling around the tent, behind me, to the side to the front, not in the movement that one could make with flashlights and at this point I realized no footsteps could be heard. I uncovered myself and knelt on the tent floor preparing for the zipper to come undone like in a horror movie. 
and I was flipping through my mind on what option to take. I was the most terrified I had ever been. Fight or flight. The lights swirled faster, and the voices grew louder but still breathy and whispery. My mind raced and I was sweating despite the cold. And then, just like that, the lights shut off like switch and the whisper stopped in nothing but silence of an empty wood. I stood there as still as I could and I didn't dare go outside that tent till the sun came up. It was and still is the scariest moment of my life. Interesting enough, I went to a horror movie premiere recently and there was a scene that had the voices in it and goosebumps ran up my arm. It was identical. The movie is called Beacon Point. Story 3. When I was 13. I was home alone on our farm as my mom and sisters were at some sort of high school sports thing. I had just finished chores for the night and was heading back to our house. I had to take off my mud-encrusted lace-up boots, which takes forever, and started listening to what I thought was my mom and sister talking. I remember thinking it was weird, as it really didn't sound like them. It really didn't sound like talking, actually. My brain knew somebody was talking, in a very loud and annoyed way, but I don't remember actually physically hearing it or able to decipher the language. I was also starting to get a bad feeling over the fact that I did not see anybody come home while I was outside. Obviously, somebody could have pulled in just as I went into our back mudroom, but I never heard either a car door close, the front door open, or the most damning, our psycho rat terrier start to bark. I finally pried my boots off my feet and headed inside. I called out hello while I passed through the kitchen heading toward the front door. Holy shit. The feeling that I just absolutely fucked up filled my chest and dumped ice straight into my heart. It felt like the time when I was facing an aggressive bull and the fence line was 100 feet away. My logical brain didn't know why I was fucked, but my instincts did. Because I'm lacking in the survival instincts, however, I kept walking through the kitchen in order to see who was there. The voices were now arguing with each other, and I somehow knew they were talking about me the idiot that was walking toward them. I eventually got to the breakfast bar that divided the kitchen from the front door area. There, I could finally make my body stop walking and froze up. Hanging in front of the door were two gray glowing orbs. The voices were very loud and very angry now, but in a weird muffled screaming way, I knew it was loud but my ears weren't picking it up. Within a second, both of them had stopped talking, twirled around each other several times, and then shot through the ceiling. I ended up sitting at the kitchen computer staring at the blank monitor until I heard my mom and sister come through the front door about 15 minutes later. Story 4. I was about 8 or 9, and my mom tells me we are going on a day trip to meet her high school friend. Cool. I grab my Game Boy Advance because I know my mom's friend has kids my age and wanted to show them up in the racing game I had. I overheard this from my mom talking with her friend at her house. They told me to leave the room because they needed to talk about adult things. Little, innocent, curious me wonders what exactly are adult things that I can't hear. Were they gonna throw some new juicy cuss words out? Well, mom's friend had a little girl who would sleepwalk at night, started when they moved into their new house, Northern California. It was a suburban area, but not too suburban new neighborhood with a lot of empty homes and forest patches in between each community. She was about four years old, and they found her one night in the backyard just sitting there. After that incident, they decide they need to lock her in her room at night and bar up her windows so that she doesn't end up in the woods nearby or anywhere. Besides her room, really, the story. Mom's friend and husband wake up to a loud boom on the side of the house in the middle of the next night. Felt like something hit the house because everything shook. They check on their boys, they're good. They didn't hear anything and go back to sleep. They check on their daughter, unlock the door and realize she isn't in her room. They start to freak out, then hear a knock at the door. They open it, it's the effing sleepwalking four-year-old daughter. They ask her where she's been, and she said with the men and points down the street. Pissed off, dad sees two guys in coats walking down the street. He yells at them and starts sprinting at them, mom's friend said. Coat guys didn't react at all. Coat guys turn the corner, dad turns the corner and they're gone. Mom and dad check the lock and windows. No tampering. They notify the police who pretty much say there's not much they can do but will keep an eye out. F and sleepwalking four-year-old daughter is fine. Isn't scared at all. Just tired and goes back to bed. After that, my mom didn't understand why I was scared as hell that night. 
She believes she was abducted but refuses to tell me what happened. Even my dad tells me that he can't tell me the story, says it's for my mom to share if she wants it shared. But overhearing this when I wasn't supposed to hear it had me tripped out as a kid. Watched the fourth kind later in life and was scared of that movie too. Friends all laughed at me saying it was stupid, but they didn't know about my mom's. Friend's story. Story 5. I wouldn't say I was abducted by aliens specifically, but I was definitely taken somewhere. It was more of an abduction of consciousness if that makes sense. I don't know, it might have been my body too, it was a weird feeling I can't really explain. I was sitting at the park one day, in broad daylight with four or five friends. I lived in a small community in the Midwest, so the park was empty except for us. We were talking and smoking, just cigarettes for me, nothing that would alter my consciousness. When suddenly everyone just kind of slowed down and eventually froze completely, myself included. I couldn't move or talk, I couldn't blink, I had to focus really hard on just breathing, and then I blacked out. I woke up alone in a dark, nearly pitch black room with three large illuminated screens around me. On the screens I saw the park from above, the exact spot where my friends and I were sitting. It felt like I was in that room for hours until I blacked out again. I finally came to and realized I'd been crying hysterically on the ground. The rest of my friends seemed pretty wrecked too, like they all just experienced something equally terrifying. I was the first one of us to speak, I said, I think I met God, and they all responded with similar brief statements. I remember one girl saying, we're on TV somewhere, which expressed the feeling of being watched, unsafe, and violated really well. I can't remember what anyone else said, just the general idea of we just got taken somewhere. We didn't talk about it besides one weird short sentence each. That was the strangest part for me, that we didn't talk about it, but we all understood that we'd seen the same thing. It felt like we couldn't talk about it where it, they, could see us. We left immediately and haven't spoken about it since. I don't keep in touch with those friends anymore, but it would be interesting to know if they felt like it was an abduction of some kind too. Story 6. I was about 15. Every night, a guy I'll call Jay, and I would sneak out at about midnight and go back home around 4 to 5 in the morning, before our parents would wake up for work. On one particular night, we had just snuck out, and it was about 1 a.m., we headed to my backyard, laid on the trampoline, and stared at the stars and talked, like we always did. Now, if you're in a room right now and you look around, you'll see the definite four corners where your ceiling and walls meet. You can see how... Square. They turn. Edge of wall. Sharp turn. Second wall. Same with your ceiling. You can see each individual flat surface. The sky did that. It went from staring at the stars to looking like a cube of sky. From the southeast corner of the sky came this giant UFO, I mean huge, as if it took up a quarter of the entire sky. We both stared at it in dead silence. It didn't make any noise, even as it moved. And while it spun, it was only hovering straight. The spinning didn't move it like you imagine a frisbee doing. The sides just turned while it moved. I guess what it looked like doesn't matter. But Jay and I had our eyes dead set on it. We didn't say a word. We didn't point to show the other person. As it began coming toward us, we both flipped over. Again, no hints, no talking, no eye contact. In total sync, we flipped onto our stomachs and stayed as flat and quiet as we could. Now, ducking from something sounds totally normal. An instinct. But that's not what this was. It was literally almost like telepathy. I can remember us having a mental conversation of, stay flat and it won't see us, don't move. We watch it make a weird angled C shape across the sky. And although it felt totally in slow motion, it could have only been a few minutes because I think both of us held our breath the entire time. Now for the weirdest part, as soon as it was out of sight, boom, daybreak. We had literally just gotten to the yard and I know it was 1.15 a.m. because I checked. But the minute we felt released from laying flat, it was very bright. Like 7.30, a.m. bright. I don't remember talking to him at all afterwards, other than making eye contact and then making a break for our homes before our parents noticed we weren't there. A few weeks, even months maybe. I'm talking to my brother's girlfriend about what happened. Apparently she's real into that shit but also completely terrified. She said the fact that it felt like a few minutes but then it was suddenly six, seven hours later truly. 100% makes her think we were abducted. 
she was serious. I made a joke about how I should go to hypnotherapy to unblock the memories and she deadpans and says, Don't. People who were abducted are traumatized by what happened to them. They even get PTSD. The next day she texted me about how she couldn't sleep. I think abduction is a little bit of a stretch and she watched too many Discovery Channel documentaries, but the weird loss of time still irks me. I do know what we saw was 100% real. Aliens? I don't know. Abduction? I don't know. Story 7 I had a year-long experience of strange events that I've never been able to explain or have a full memory of. It started in winter working up north on a project. Our crew was put up in a motel 10 minutes outside of the largest town in the area. I somehow got upgraded to a king-size bed with couches. Nice room. Our days were long, so I used the couches to stack my clothes in piles, jeans, hoodies, etc. I had brought my entire desktop computer with me and was in the middle of a massive argument with my ex over Facebook Messenger at 1 a.m. during the second week up there. At some point I opened my eyes and I was sitting on top of a pile of hoodies on the couch. The time was now 4 a.m. I rushed over to the computer. At some point after 1 a.m. I had stopped typing a sentence midway through. My ex had left a ton of messages throughout the night demanding I answer her back. She also left missed calls and texts on my phone that was still sitting beside the moose. I figured I had somehow passed out but wasn't sure how I ended up on top of my hoodies on the cooch and not just fall into bed. Went to sleep normally for the remaining couple hours before work. A couple of days later, a stranger scenario happened. My routine was, we'd finish work, I'd come back to the motel around 9 p.m., shower, change, and drive into town for late night dinner at Boston Pizza only restaurant open late other than McDonald's. So this particular night I went through my routine, took a shower, changed, headed for the door. I got to my car and when I turned it on, something felt really wrong. I looked at the time, it was now 2 a.m. I had no idea how I had lost around four hours between showering and getting into my car. It felt weird, my whole body felt weird. I felt violated, like a rape victim would describe waking up from being assaulted while passed out. You feel violated, but you have no idea what happened, not a single memory or explanation. I stayed up all night scared shitless trying to figure out what happened. Why was I missing four hours? If I had passed out, why didn't I wake up on the floor? Why did I feel violated, etc. The rest of the project, nothing else happened, but once I got back home, things started happening that were just as weird. There's more to my experiences, but those two events were the starting catalysts. I've never actually figured out what happened, but most people I've asked all seem to agree it had to be abduction events. Another experience. For the first month or so, nothing happened further. But then something weird started happening. I began waking up around 2 a.m. and not being able to fall back asleep until the sun came up. I would wake up and have the urge to turn on every light in the apartment and stay up, find things to do, and wait until sunup before going back to bed. I started to notice that in my dreams, random strangers would show up telling me to wake up. If I tried to ignore them in my dream, they would find ways to harass me and tell me to wake up, telling me it's really important that I wake up. Then there was a really vivid dream. I had gotten dressed up in my dream and driven to an upscale hotel. No idea what the context of this dream was. When I got to my hotel room in the dream, someone started knocking on the door shouting, Hello? Hello? Over and over again. Just when I was about to open the door, the phone rang. I answered and the voice on the phone told me not to open the door. I kept telling whoever was on the phone that I really should see why this person keeps knocking, but the voice kept urging me not to answer the door. I finally hung up the phone, headed to the door, opened at it, and woke up in bed in a cold sweet threeum. Couldn't go back to sleep. These were the kinds of dreams. People trying to get me to wake up, and random flashes of bright white light that would light up everything no matter where I was or what time of day in my dream. I remember one dream being outside in the middle of a sunny day and a bright white flash that overpowered the sun. And usually at this point some random person in my dream would run up to me and urge me to wake up. Or tell me the flash wasn't part of my dream and I should wake up. Random people in your dream telling you you're in a dream and that you have to wake up is creepy as fuck. And they were always strangers, 
no one I knew in real life. A precursor to these dreams was the urge to go to sleep early. I would have these urges to drop everything that I was doing and get in bed, sometimes leaving lights on, TV on, in the middle of games, middle of eating, etc. There was no fighting it. I would put down the controller or put my fork down and march right to my room and lie down. It was this weird zombie-like drowsiness. But I would always wake up after 2 a.m. and not be able to go to sleep again until the sun came up. During the summer, I took a trip to upstate New York with a friend, and we stayed at some motel overnight before heading further on our trip. That night, I remember knocking on my door and someone who kept yelling, Hello? Hello? Just like in that hotel dream, I remember my friend was fast asleep unfazed by the knock, but I ended up going to the door and unlocking it. Don't remember anything after that. I woke up sitting on the office chair by the desk. Around 6 a.m. I checked, but the door was locked and nothing had been taken. It didn't look like anyone had entered. I woke my friend up and asked if he'd heard knocking during the night. He said no. I told him what happened and he was pretty pissed that I would wake up in the middle of the night to open the door to a stranger. But there was no sign that I did, or that someone had come in, just that I somehow ended up on the chair and not the bed. I still feel like I was awake when I went to answer the door though. The weird thing was these dreams and urges to go to sleep wouldn't always happen, maybe two, three times a week. But I was starting to fear going to sleep without the lights being on, all blinds closed, or I'd fight to stay up all night and just go to sleep during the day. After this, I was getting really fed up with how fucked my sleeping schedule had become and I started to notice when I'd get the feeling that I should go to sleep. I would take that as a cue to get in my car and head for the busiest section of the city at night I could find, filled with people. And I'd notice that the urge to go to sleep would go away instantly. So every time I felt the urge to drop everything and go to sleep, I would fight the urge and drive downtown. Anytime I felt like I was being watched too, I'd get in my car and go downtown. It must have worked because after a few weeks of doing this, all these strange urges to go to sleep randomly, dreams with flashes of white light and people telling me to wake up all went away. I haven't had a single recurrence of these events since. However, I noticed I still have a fear of going to sleep until the sun comes up that I'm always fighting. I also recently noticed that pictures of the typical gray alien now scare the shit out of me and I hate looking at them. Even seeing the cartoon ones on South Park, I get mini panic attacks. Those pictures had never bothered me before in my life, but now they send me into waves of panic. I still have no explanation for the missing time up north, the weird dreams, or that one night at the motel in upstate New York, which I don't think was a dream. It felt very real, and felt more like another missing time event. Most people I've told don't know what to make of it, my current girlfriend has noticed I obsess with making sure all blinds are closed with no open slivers no matter where I sleep. I told this story to someone at a party once and the guy came out and told me his abduction story and he was pretty positive. I had been getting abducted during that year and that they'd either gotten bored of me or I had become a hassle with constantly trying to drive to places full of people to avoid the happenings. Other friends either offer no explanation or believe some sort of abduction scenario was taking place. Who knows? I have no memory of physically being abducted, but those weird feelings of being watched, being urged to go to sleep, feeling violated when waking up. That shit felt real and still bothers me. Last year I fell asleep on my girlfriend's bed while she stayed up watching Netflix in the living room. I left the lights on. At some point in the night she came to turn the lights off and says, I woke up screaming and yelling, fuck off, leave me alone, help, don't touch me, etc. She said it was the scariest, most blood-curdling thing she'd ever heard, and that literally seconds later I had passed back out and was asleep again, and she couldn't get me to wake up. The end. Thanks for watching. Don't leave before leaving a like to this video. Also, hit the subscribe button to support my work. And as always, have a horrific nightmare, my dear.